Welcome to the Group Dentistry Now Show, the voice of the DSO industry. Kim Larson and Bill Newman talk to industry leaders about their challenges, successes, and the future of group dentistry. Visit groupdentistrynow.com for more DSO analysis, news, and events. Looking for a job or have a job to fill? Visit joindso.com. We hope you enjoy today's show. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Group Dentistry Now show. I'm Bill Newman, and uh, on today's show, we're going to talk about all things dental recruiting. So really hot topic right now. It's always a hot topic, but I think especially with COVID and some of the challenges that have come up during this time. So I'd like to welcome our guests, Priyanki um, Roliwala, and she is with 42 North. Priyanki, thanks for being here. Thank you, Bill, for having me. I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. So I'll uh, give you a little background on Priyanki. Uh, she is the Senior Manager of Talent Acquisitions for 42 North, and she does recruiting for 85 plus practices. Can't keep up with all the practices you all add, uh, but it's over 85 practices across New England. Uh, she focuses in on doctors and specialists. She has been with 42 North for five and a half years and has 10 plus years experience, uh, mostly in healthcare, uh, including private duty home care and senior care sectors. And she is a graduate from the University of Baltimore. So hopefully I got everything in there, but again, thanks for being here Priyanki. Yes, you actually got everything perfectly. So I appreciate that, yes. Hey, excellent. Um, so talk to, talk to us a little bit about um, 42 North. Like I mentioned, uh, you've had a lot of growth uh, recently and actually, I guess not super recently, but relatively recently, you had the name change were General Dental and about what, two, two and a half years ago, it moved from General Dental to 42 North. Yeah, correct. So uh, you're right, about two years ago or something like that, I'm losing track of time here. Um, we you know, did change our name from General Dental to 42 North Dental just to better reflect the business. So General Dental is obviously still a huge part of who we are. It's one of our brands. So what we're doing is as we're growing, we are also affiliating with a lot of existing dental practices. And what we realized, Bill, is that a lot of patients you know, don't really appreciate or understand such kind of uh, conglomerates or some, such types of mergers and acquisitions where you change a name. It's not really um, super friendly in the patient world. So what we do is we keep the original name of the practice. So what that ends up doing is, you know, that doesn't kind of reflect properly on the general dental name, just because there's so many different brands that we have. So we change our name to 42 North Dental and then General Dental is one of our brands. And then we've got so many other different practices under the original practice names as well. So General Dental technically is one of our brands. Okay. What, yeah. so, so tell me what states you're, you're located in right now, 42 North. The practice. Yeah. So right now we're, we're a New England based organization. Uh, as you had mentioned, we have close to 85 practices all across New England. So we are, our headquarters are actually in Waltham, Massachusetts, about 20 minutes outside of Boston. Um, but we're actually in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, Connecticut, and New York. So we're currently in five different states. Okay. Yeah. You're down in New York now. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about some of the chat. There's always challenges um, regarding recruiting, right? So staffing and recruiting is a challenge, uh, but then throw COVID into it and it presents a whole other dynamic. So let's talk a little bit about how you personally and 42 North has dealt with the, the staffing uh, situation and recruiting. Yeah, Bill, I mean, you're right. So staffing, staffing has been a staffing in general is a challenge in, in any industry, definitely very much so in healthcare and definitely in dentistry as well. It's always been a challenge. And as you had mentioned, uh, during COVID, it, it became even a, a, a bigger struggle, uh, more so than ever. I would say some of the reasons why is really just because of the fact that, um, you know, a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of uh, people during the, during the COVID quarantine time or whatnot, um, you know, it was very new at that time and people were really afraid. So a lot of people were actually afraid to, to even generally come back into work or come into work just because they didn't understand the, the whole thing and they didn't know if they were going to catch COVID or hurt their family members or whatnot. So we've seen a lot of staff that generally just didn't want to come back due to the fear of, of getting COVID. Um, and then another issue was also, um, and I'm sure Bill, like all the viewers must agree to this, everyone 
kind of has children that are now in remote learning. So uh, any person that had a young child or even just um, a child in general that had to switch to remote learning, that in itself became a big struggle because the mom and dad, mom or dad or mom and dad together um, would have to stay at home and support the child and, you know, kind of get them through their day of their remote learning or whatnot. So we saw that a lot of staff members just couldn't come back to work because they're the ones who had to end up kind of staying at home to support their, their children at home through the remote learning and all that stuff. Um, a lot of staff members also didn't come back just because they either um, live with elderly parents or grandparents or, you know, we're surrounded by, by those elderly people that are, quote unquote, more at a high risk of, you know, of, of getting COVID or whatever the case is. So uh, we lost a lot of staff because of that, too. I mean, um, you know, all of it, all of it in general was a huge struggle for us, Bill. Yeah, I, I can only imagine what, um, so, so really, what did you, um, what, what did you do there really to, to kind of make things well, I guess one of the issues we heard was it wasn't so much getting patients back that was some of it, it was getting the staff yeah. to come back so you could get you'd have patients, but you might yeah. not, you might have staffing issues so how, how did you all combat that. So what we did was we kind of had to strategically, strategically think about it. Number one is, you're right, though, like um, our patients actually, um, you know, for the most part, did want to come back, did want to do come, come back in. So as long as we were following guidelines by the CDC and whatever the states had, um, had you know, given us, we were following through that and the patients were OK with it for the most part to come back, which was a good thing. Um, in terms of staffing, what we kind of did was we started being more creative creative in our thinking. Um, number one is we never ever wanted to let go of our current employees. It's just not a thing that we want to do just because they've all worked for us for so long and we've developed those great relationships. And, and let's face it, even our patients love our staff, right? So uh, we started kind of thinking creatively. So we didn't want to think about, okay, let's, let's take, let, let's, we didn't want to basically get rid of staff and then hire a new team that didn't make sense. But we started thinking strategically like, okay, um, if your child is in remote learning week one, but then is in school week two, and you're able to actually commit to specific hours week two while your child is in school, let's do that. Let's do week two, you come back in, and then week one, you're not in, in the practice. Um, and then kind of we would we would go through that based on whom the team members were. So if one one dental assistant could come in week one and then the other one could come week two, that's kind of how we would staff it. So it's a lot of work and it's a lot of obviously it's a lot of work in the scheduling side for our practices. Um, but we we definitely did do that just so we could make sure that our staff still, you know, had their their jobs or their careers that they spent so much time trying to work on. Um, and that way our patients were still getting the, the support and everything that we that we needed for the practices. So that's kind of what we did. And then we started also doing different hours, like different shifts. So we would do maybe like a morning shift and then an evening shift. So we would do various shifts. So that even if the if the dental assistant or whomever it was for the practice, they could still come in every day and then do a specific amount of hours. So their hours might be reduced from what they were originally doing pre-COVID, but that way they could still come in, still provide the support that they need, and still provide the support that they needed at home as well through their children's remote learning or whatever other duties they needed to take care of. Yeah, that sounds great. So flexible schedules were, were a big thing. And are you still doing that to, to, to this yeah. day? Yeah, yeah, flexible schedules. I talked to a lot of dentists. I mean, dentists that are looking for jobs or whatever the case is. Same thing. A lot of dentists that are currently looking for jobs. Um, a lot of them say, you know what, my my wife is at home um, on specific days. So those are the days that I can go to work. And then the days that she's back at work, I need to stay at home or vice versa, so on and so forth. So uh, even the candidate pool has gotten to that point where it's all about the exact schedule and them being able to squeeze that into their schedule. So it could just be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it could be Tuesday, Thursday, it could be specific days based on whatever's going on at home and whatever their spouse's schedule looks like. So there's almost that expectation now from people you talk to that are looking for careers that there's going to be flexibility with the schedules. Yes, 
Yeah, so everyone, anyone, anyone and everyone that's looking right now, um, they're, they're looking for a lot of flexibility. And the great thing, Bill, is that is that because our practices are open six days a week um, and our practices aren't, aren't typically just open nine to five, our practices are open anywhere from eight or nine in the morning, sometimes even at seven in the morning, all the way up until 8 p.m. So we're actually able to provide the shifts that these people are looking for. So if someone wants to do an evening shift from 12 to 8 p.m., we we have that option available. If someone wanted to come in a little early in the morning and then end a little early, we also have that option. And then, you know, I guess the funny thing is now everyone wants to work Saturdays because Saturday is a day that, you know, their, their kids aren't in the remote learning. Their kids right. don't really need that much help or support and they can quickly come in and do a full day Saturday as well. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. So Saturdays become preferred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Saturday, Saturday has become a preferred day. Um, you know, the, the shifts that people originally weren't excited to work like an evening shift, they're wanting to work that now because in the mornings they can kind of uh, get their kids settled in. Uh, into their remote learning or whatever they need to do and then come into work in the afternoon. So great. Yeah. So let, let's talk about some other things uh, 42 North's done. Um, talk about technology a little bit and, and how you've uh, started to use that and you know whether it's pre-COVID or whether you you know you hear a lot of talk about using things like uh, teledentistry or from the standpoint of you know you don't want the patients hanging out in the waiting room any longer than than they have to if if at all. So you know, there's a lot of texting that's going on now, patient reminders. Talk, talk a little bit about technology and how that's helped. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bill, I would say pre-COVID too, we were obviously using technology. So uh, texting the, the patients before their, before their appointment for confirmations, we would email. So we actually do uh, a phone call confirmation, an email confirmation, and then a text confirmation. So for us, it's kind of a foolproof system. Like, we've kind of tackled you down in all different ways to make sure that either you're going to come in or you're not going to come in. Yeah. Um, so we, we used to do that pre COVID um, and it's a great system. So that works, that has continued to work well for us. Uh, teledentistry. Yes. We've started to use that of course, as well. Um, especially during the lockdown or the quarantine, um, you know, we, you know, we basically had to close down a lot of practices or shut down a lot of practices for a temporary amount of time because of the lockdown, but we still did have specific hub offices that we would keep open uh, for emergency care, but the way that we would triage it was through the teledentistry. So telehealth is what we were using, yes. Okay. What about um, recruiting? Uh, I mean, obviously, probably Zoom meetings or things like this from a recruitment standpoint, not a lot of in-person uh, interviews anymore. So t talk about um, yeah. and maybe the, the challenges with, with recruitment when it comes to technology and how you've been able to leverage it. Yeah, the world of recruitment has certainly changed in the past year, for sure. Um, again, we've always utilized technology. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. So, yeah, same thing. You know, we, we do a lot of, because we're growing, we're, we're doing a lot of hiring. Um, and what we do is we actually hire six months in advance for a lot of graduates coming out of dental school, a lot of people coming out of residency. So remember, we're multi-specialty practices. So not only are we hiring general dentists as providers, we're also hiring specialists. So we're hiring oral surgeons, endodontists, orthodontists, periodontists, pediatric dentists in our practices. So what we used to do, Bill, was um, we're kind of closely connected or tied into a lot of dental schools and a lot of residency programs. We used to fly out residents, have them come to our Waltham, Massachusetts headquarters. We would, um, you know, get them like a, a basically a, a hotel room the night before. They would interview with us for a few hours. We would get them to see the practices. It was like a full blown experience that we, we had put together, which we were excited about and was working well. Um, and then, of course, once COVID hit, that, that completely changed things because the fact of the matter is most people really are not able to travel. There's, there's a whole process behind it based on what's going on, based on if your state will allow you to you know, travel without quarantining and get a COVID test and all that stuff. So we basically realigned our strategy. So now all that stuff that we used to do in person has literally changed into Zoom meetings. So we do a lot of uh, phone interviews, we do a lot more Zoom meetings, and then now we're doing virtual tours of our practices. So, um, yeah. you know, it's definitely, it's not the, the same exact feeling and the same exact energy that you're gonna get when you're in person. Um, 
but uh, I am pleasantly surprised. It's actually been working really well. Um, and, you know, the best thing I would say that the biggest or the best thing is, is that the residents don't need to take time off of their schooling uh, to come and fly and meet with us and stuff like that. So that's helpful. So no one really has to take any time off. Um, we're quickly just kind of doing this now based on their availability in the afternoons during their lunch break or in between their patients and stuff like that. So I think they've appreciated that a lot, a lot more. Um, and then on our end, you know, it's a lot more coordination or juggling. Um, but it also, you know what, it, it also saves a lot more time on our end. Um, and it saves a lot more money on our end as well. So it's been kind of financially helpful as well. Yeah. So this might be something that uh, post COVID you may want to stick with at least. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's, the Zoom. Yeah, the Zoom, the Zoom meetings have been working really well. The Zoom interviews have been working very, very well for us. And I really don't see that going away yeah. at all. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because it so was you, always a struggle to get the residents to come out. And now it's kind of been a lot easier. And I, I appreciate that. We've appreciated that a lot. Yes. Yeah. Now they have this, they have this option. So uh, speaking of, you know, young, the younger docs, the uh, dental schools and, and grads, certainly has probably been a change. Um, probably spent a lot of time at uh, the different dental schools um, around the Boston area, uh, recruitment events. And now, of course, that's all gone away. So talk a little bit about how 42 North gets their brand out, how you communicate with the schools, and then you're commuting, communicating with the residents and the dental students. Yeah, so it, it's funny. Um, you're right. You know, one number one good thing is we're kind of based out of Boston. So we've got a lot of great dental schools just around the corner from us. Um, and yeah, I, that was another big thing, like, because normally we would go to their, the graduation brunches that they would host, and we would do a lot of lunch and learns, and we would go to their career fairs and their vendor fairs, and like Chops every year has a Bates Day that we would go to and be a part of, um, all in person, you know, we'd set up our booth and all these different things that we were doing, Um so now we, but one good thing is now they've actually changed it and allowed it to be virtually. So um, I'm now doing a virtual lunch and learn, um, which I, I was a little hesitant about. I wasn't sure how that was gonna turn out, um, but it's been really good, you know? So the students again appreciate it because they could be in, in their apartments or they could be at home um, kind of tuning into the lunch and learn and. Uh, the good thing is they can kind of quickly text or chat with me via questions that they have. Um, so it's been, like I said, a, a different experience, but I got some feedback after some of the lunch and learns that I've hosted. And, you know, I feel like I got more positive feedback uh, doing it virtually than I have in person. So uh, that was that was helpful. Um, and then nowadays, like I said, so um, I know with Tufts, they're doing their first annual Bates Day virtually. Uh, it'll be their first annual virtual Bates Day that's coming up in a few few weeks. Um, so I'll be curious as to see how that goes. But but we're trying. I mean, you know, the dental schools are trying their best to continue um, to continue with their traditions and stuff that be, they've been doing. Um, you know, they're trying to still, you know generate revenue and stuff and income and stuff like that through the vendors that they've always had so they're continuing to do that and you know the good thing bill is when you when you're at an organization like 42 north dental we're continuing to grow, grow even during these tough times even during covid um and we're still hiring and you know our, we're still kind of affiliating with practices and opening up new practices or whatnot so we're also doing our best to support these dental schools and you know these other companies that are out there for sure so Priyanki, when you're when you're actually talking to these virtually, talking to these dental students or residents, what what are they looking for? Like, have have things changed since COVID, or you know, what what are you hearing from the dental students? What 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 are they asking? What are they? What what is? Are there any things that have um, yeah. it kind of bubbled to the surface? You might go, wow, this is a little bit different than than pre COVID. Yeah, it's funny. Um, definitely a lot of their, their questions have changed. Um, so, I mean, obviously, the, some are going to always be the same. How do you compensate? You know, what do your practices look like? Stuff like that. Um, but one of their biggest concerns or one of their number one questions now is, um, 
is your practice safe and clean? Like, is it going to be okay for your patients and for myself and for anyone else that's in the practice? What are you doing to, to practice social distancing? What are you doing for your patients? Are you checking their temperature as soon as they come in? Do you provide them hand sanitizer? Are you following all the CDC guidelines? Are you following all the guidelines provided by your state on a minute by minute basis? Um, so these are some of the questions that I'm getting asked. And Bill, it's funny, I mean, it's not even the dental students, though they are asking me that. Uh, but what I've seen is the talent market has shifted. So a lot of people, a lot of the experienced dentists that were already working at practices or whatnot, um, they started looking for jobs just because they felt like, number one, their practice wasn't abiding by everything that, you know, the CDC was putting out or anything that their state dental board was putting out. So they actually uh, started looking for jobs just because they felt like their practice wasn't coherent to all those things. Mm. Um, and then number two, a lot of them started looking just because um, not a lot of those patients that they usually were seeing were actually not coming back. So a lot of dentists felt like their practices were a lot slower than they used to be. They weren't getting as many as new, new patients as they used to. Um, they weren't, they felt like their existing patient base wasn't coming back just because of the fact that it's COVID, they were scared to come back or financially they just couldn't do it for right now, so on and so forth. So I've kind of seen a, a mix of, of what's going on in the market right now. Interesting. So, yeah. uh, so other positions besides uh, dentists, let's talk about like hygiene assistants. What, what are we, what are you seeing there? I mean, are there uh, any differences um, as far as, you know, maybe the questions that they may be asking, um, availability. I mean, we've heard in certain parts of the country, hygiene has been a big problem, getting hygienists oh, yes. back. Are you seeing some of that as well? Hi hygiene has been a huge, huge struggle. Um, uh, I would say we've gotten a lot better uh, today than we probably were maybe about five, six months ago. Um, so we've gotten a lot better. The, the candidate pool has opened up a little bit. Um, but yes, I, I would say when it first happened, um, hygienists were not coming back to work. Hygienists, was, hygienists were not coming back to work. And I think it's just because of the demographic. Um, most of them are, are females or most of them basically did have young kids at home. And um, a lot of them, number one, were either afraid to come back to work just because of the exposure to COVID. Um, and they weren't really sure what we were gonna do or what was gonna happen in all these practices. And then number two, um, I would say probably half of them just couldn't come back because of the fact that they had so many restrictions in the house. So um, it was kind of flat out throughout the dental industry. None of the hygienists were coming back. The hygiene, the hygiene struggle was real. Um, but like I said, Bill, you know, what we did was we try to work with, with the talent pool that we already had, try to, you know, accommodate them as much as possible, try to work with them in their schedules, not be so quote unquote rigid, um, because technically we're all here for the patients. So we felt like as long as, uh, they were there and around to support the patients as much as possible, we would try to work through everything else as much as possible. So, yeah, that's um, great. we added a lot more, we had a lot more flexibility flexibility on our ends, try to work with them on their schedule. Um, you know, again, we're all kind of in this together. So trying to be as flexible as possible with their schedules and stuff like that. Um, and I would say, um, you know, as we all kind of got settled into the year um, with COVID and everything that was happening, a lot of them just kind of either figured out something to do for their home, for their home. So like either, you know, hire a babysitter at home or get some parents or someone else to help so they could come back to work um, while we work with them on their scheduling. And then um, we noticed that kind of, like I said, as people got accommodated, they became less afraid. So the hygienists that were originally afraid to come back to work were now coming back to work and, you know, just kind of got over it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it sure, sure does. All right, let, let's, let's shift here a little bit. Um, we have a lot of, I would say, younger, uh, we have career seekers, a lot of younger docs that, that follow the podcast, uh, go to the website. Um, what questions should they be asking you? So you get, you, you're, you're dealing with them day in and day out. What should they be asking you? How do they really find out whether 42 North or another DSO is the right place for them? 
Yeah, uh, Bill, that I think that's a great question. And I would say that some of the questions that they really should ask uh, as of recent times, and it's, it's a legit question is what we just talked about. Um, and it is a concern. I've seen that a lot of uh, a lot of places and it's not their fault. It's just it's hard to abide by everything and go through all these changes, especially because everything is happening so fast. Um, it's hard to keep track of. But, you know, as they go and look for jobs, as they're interviewing at places, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask if uh, the practice is kind of abiding by all the guidelines and what they're doing and how they're keeping up with all the trends and all the changes that are constantly happening. Um, so ask that. I, I think that should be the number one question to ask these days, just because, you know, again, we're all here for the patient. So we have to make sure that the patients are safe and okay. And obviously, so, so are we. So we have to make sure we're also okay and we're in a healthy, safe work environment. Um, so don't be shy or afraid to ask those questions. I think it's legit and it should be asked. Um, and you know, most of the other candidates ask me the, the regular stuff, you know, how we compensate, if their schedule is going to be busy and what the practice looks like and what the setup is like and stuff like that. So th those are the questions that I've always been asked. Um, and those are continuously just going to be asked anyways, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, what about um, misconceptions? So uh, we talk a lot about DSOs and uh, I'm sure you probably have some people interviewing and they may think certain things. So, um, you know, how, what misconceptions do you kind of find when you're talking to people that are interviewing, um, yeah. dealing with staffing, and then how do you kind of um, combat those misconceptions? Yeah, you know, Bill, it's funny. Um, I, there are some people that for some reason it, it's instilled in their minds or their brains that a DSO is just not the place that they want to be. They just want to be at a private practice. And when I've talked to these, these people or kind of challenged them on the reason why, they didn't really have many legit reasons. They're like, well, it's just not for me. I don't, I don't want to do a DSO. I just want to work at a private practice. So there's no quote unquote rhyme or reason other than it's kind of instilled in their minds that that's what they want to do. And though there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is a lot of people feel like, you know, when they're going to join a DSO or whatnot, they feel like they're gonna just be a set of hands to do dentistry, or they're gonna be kind of part of a, a mill or uh, a factory where, you know, we're not really there to take care of the patients and we're not really there to serve the patients. We're really there to quote unquote, uh, generate revenue and make money. And um, we don't really kind of care about the patients and we're not doing right by the patients. And they also feel like there's a lot of production goals that they need to follow and stuff like that. and. And those are just not accurate. So it's not just for 42 North Dental, you know, I, I kind of am, am connected in the dental industry. I talk to a lot of people at all the other DSOs, including Aspen and Pacific Dental and a lot of the other local DSOs as well. And uh, we all kind of agree, like there's no quote unquote production goals that you need to follow for the most part. I mean, we all, of course, we're all here together and we're all working towards something together. So we all do want to be profitable, but we also want to do it in a very uh, nice moral way. And again, we, we still have the same purpose. We're all here to serve the patients and do well and do right by the patients, do good for the patients. So we follow the same mantra that, that most dentists or, or anyone in the dental organization or dental support organization or anyone should be following, which is, you know, do well for the patient, do right for the patient, and then the rest will just kind of follow. Okay. Well, this is, this is a last the final question for you, Priyanki. Sure. So um, talk to me a little bit about what you see the future of recruiting in the DSO space. What does that look like? I mean, we can talk about it in a post-COVID world. We could talk about it, but you know, whether it's um, technology, whether it's going to be more difficult, whether it's going to be easier, you know, just g give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't see it getting easier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you that it's going to get easier. Um, but I've been with this company now for almost six years. And um, each day is a struggle for sure, in terms of recruiting, it's, it's not an easy job. Um, it's, 
it's something that you have to continuously just work towards. So same thing, utilize technology as much as possible. Um, technology obviously is great. So like I said, you know, I feel like some of the greatest things that we did during COVID was switch to the Zoom world. It worked a lot better for our interview process. We could quickly get more people through the door, quickly get them interviewed and stuff like that. So that worked really well. So I would say, uh, post COVID, we're going to continue to utilize the Zoom and the technology as much as possible. So people are traveling less, uh, fitting more things through their schedule and, you know, saving time in the end, just because they're not traveling and, and coming in for all these interviews and stuff like that. So that will work well. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't see this getting any easier. Um, but what I will tell you, Bill, is that the recruitment world is definitely a necessity in, D, in a DSO, in any organization, especially in healthcare or the dental, dental support organizations or, or any dental practice. So the need for recruitment is definitely going to be there. We're always going to continuously have turnover. It is, it's part of the industry. It's part, it is what it is. So the turnover will always be there. There will always, always be be a huge need for recruitment. It's not going to be easy. So I, I guess my piece of advice to anyone that's kind of listening that's out there is, you know, when it comes to, to recruitment, make sure that you hire talented, talented uh, recruiters that have a great background that have specific personality fits for the job. Um, that's what I've seen. Hire recruiters that are passionate about what they do because anyone that's passionate about what they do the rest will just kind of follow so yeah that makes sense that's that's a great way to to end yeah. things so yes. I, I appreciate you taking time today i'm sure you're going to be doing some interviewing later on probably I am. yes <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Well, well, thanks, Priyanki. So uh, again, um, we like to thank Priyanki um, Rolliwala from 42 North, and um, she was kind enough to take some time today and, and talk a little bit about the challenges of recruitment, and especially in a, in a COVID world. Although, like we mentioned before, there's there's always challenges, and um, we'll uh, we'll check in with you maybe later on and and see how things are going uh, maybe next year and we can we can talk a little bit about how we are how things are post covid so that Sounds might be good. might be yes. the way to go but uh, yes. again th thanks for joining us bill thank you so much for having me i really appreciate that yep. and thanks everybody for listening and watching today i'm bill newman with the group dentistry now show until next time The Group Dentistry Now Show has listeners across North and South America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. If you like our show, subscribe today and please tell your colleagues about us.